everybody thanks for clicking on the video and watching this video of me and Tia pouring this garage floor now Darren and Luke are out this week they're up north hunting so they left me all week to work by myself luckily this was a Friday right here I asked Tia to come in and help me before she had to go to work um, so we're gonna get this garage floor poured it's a 24 24 garage floor we got about nine yards of concrete and you know the difficult thing about pouring these floors by yourself is just having to do literally everything. So having one extra person, like like me having Tia helping me today, makes this job twice as easy, more than twice as easy, really. Um, it just it just allows me to do some things while she gets some other things done, and it makes the job go a lot faster. So. All in all, you, this took us about 20 to 25 minutes to pour this, the two of us. And it probably would have taken me, you know, maybe 40 minutes to do it by myself, 45 minutes. I don't know. Um, luckily, I didn't have to worry about that. But you're going to also get to see me use a, a power screed. I'm going to be using a battery-operated power screed here to screed this while Tia kind of tunes in the concrete and rakes the concrete behind me. But... Pouring concrete by yourself is is pretty difficult, you know. If you if you don't pour concrete a lot, and you're a little unsure of like the basic steps, the sequence to use, it can be pretty difficult. Once you once you get the hang of it, and you you know you do it a lot, you have a certain type of method you use. Then uh, you know you know how much time you have to get it down, then it becomes a little bit easier. But even for someone like me, who's been doing this a long long time. Still, pouring concrete by yourself definitely isn't easy on something like this. I'm using a 3500 PSI mix today. I got fiber mesh in the mix. I got a, a water reducer in it, which allows me to pour the concrete a little bit looser, like this 7-inch slump right here. Um, we're pouring right on crushed rock. That was in the detail. I'm working for the foundation guy here, so I'm kind of a subcontractor on this job. I didn't... I didn't plan or spec out the details of the pour. I just, they tell me what they want and how they want it done and they hire me to do it. <laughs> and that's basically how it happens. We did the house in behind, oh, probably three or four weeks before this, uh, basically on the same type of detail. So as you can see, I'm getting about two thirds of this poured out before I screed it. I want to make sure I have enough poured out so I can get the first half of it screeded all at the same basically all at the same time without having to stop and once I dump once I dump a bunch of that concrete on the ground then I'm kind of tuning it in with my my come along we call these a come along a lot of you guys call them rakes basically the same thing but I call this tuning it in so I'm trying to get it as close as I can by eye to the top of that wall without getting it low the worst thing when it comes to screeding is, is having the concrete too low it's not as bad if it's a little bit high because you can always pull it back behind the screed and you don't have to stop to rake it back up if you're low, but I'm raking it up. I'm raking it down the best I can and then what I'm doing now is I'm shooting my wet pad in the middle. There's, there's a bunch of ways I could have had this pad. I could have put a stake in there with a nail through it, you know, and, and got this all done before, but typically we don't want to hit that or kick it or... Um, have to recheck it so a lot of times we'll just shoot a wet pad in the concrete just like this and what I'm shooting for with my level in this pad is I want to make that pad exactly the same height as the top of the concrete wall I got it still a little bit high in there so probably 3 8 to a half inch high so I'm raking a little bit out so I can get it down to level and in the meantime T is going around she's magged all the edges for me so I can use those as my my wet screed line on the outside when I'm using a power screed like this I don't really like to ride it on top of the hard concrete like the, the top of the concrete wall just it doesn't vibrate as well so we like to ride both edges of it on the wet concrete and that's basically what I call a wet pad right there and I'm looking at both ends making sure both ends are scoring and they're not really digging down too deep and I want to be I want to leave a little bit of a line in the concrete in the wet pad that tells me that my pad is flat and then that's I use the wet pad on both sides to go by as I screed the concrete like this 
That battery screed, that weighs about 35 pounds. It's really uh, quiet. We've been using it. We've been using it for a couple years now. It works really, really good. I know some of you guys, I've heard some of you guys out there don't really like power screeds. It's, and I didn't at first either. You know, we always screeded everything by hand and I thought it was, I thought it was faster. I thought it was more accurate. And I, I mean, at first I was right. But after I, after I used it over and over again, it's it's basically just about as fast as us hand screeding. It's it's just about as accurate as far as getting the floor flat. It just takes practice, and you got to pour the concrete at the right slump. You can't pour it too stiff. If you pour it too stiff, then you're gonna have trouble. That's that's one thing I've seen with some other guys trying to use these power screeds. Is you know the concrete's just too stiff. Those things aren't heavy enough. You, they don't, you don't have enough down pressure on them to get the concrete nice and level. So it just takes too long to get the concrete screeded that way. So if you're not going to pour a six or seven slump, I wouldn't even bother using these things really. So another good thing about having an extra person is, you know, you can see me. I'm dumping out more concrete after I got it screeded while T is getting the bow float done. And again, it just makes the process go a lot quicker. If I didn't have her here helping me today, I would be bow floating that. No concrete would be being poured right now. And it, it would, again, take at least twice as long, if not more than twice as long. Having a good concrete truck driver too, somebody that's patient, somebody that's, you know, not willing to, I mean, somebody that's willing to step in and help a little bit, that makes the whole process a little bit easier too. That's that, that's a perfect slump right there for pouring a garage floor or a basement floor. Not too wet, it's not too dry. Moves around really good. So now we're gonna tee us over there magging that edge to top a wall. I'm magging that middle piece right there to top a wall. And I'm gonna use that as my wet pad you'll see how I'm gonna strike that in a second this is how we mag the edges we I mean you could ride that on top of the concrete you could ride the screed on top of the hard concrete right there but like I said if you get any paste on top or a rock on top and the screed's gonna to want to ride up over those and you're not gonna be as accurate as you could so it's best to mag float your edges like this get them nice and smooth and then use that as your as your uh, pad to screed off from. Let me know down in the comments if some of you guys do it differently, or if if you've ever ever used a power screed. You know, do you have do you have good luck with it like I do, or do you not really like it as much? Again, just like anything, it just takes time, takes patience, takes a little practice to get it right, but. Once you do get it right, it can save you from uh, a lot of extra work from bending over and pulling the concrete with a regular hand screed. A lot of these garages like this will slope, you know, a couple inches from the back towards the front. That way, whenever any water drips off the cars, It'll kind of tend to want to run out the doors. This one here, they just wanted it flat, perfectly flat with top of wall. We don't do too many garages like this that are perfectly flat, to be honest with you. But this is what they wanted, so this is what we're going to give them. You can see when you use one of these power screeds, you really need somebody, rake, at least one person, raking the concrete. It's just, these are really hard to use just by yourself. Um, and, and get the floor flat at all it's just stopping and starting and not filling and pulling back the high is it's just part of the process with one of these so if you don't have someone helping you right it's it can be a little difficult and time consuming having one that's light too is a big key because you're the few times you do have to pick it up and move it. I mean, this is a small floor, but 
if you do bigger stuff, especially bigger residential houses, you know, picking them up and lugging them around is kind of difficult. So the lighter they are can be an advantage that way. The trouble with them being too light, like I said, if the concrete's too stiff or too dry, then you're going to have a hard time getting it flat like you see I'm doing right here. That's what we like to see right there. I mean, that's that's the hard part done. Basically getting the concrete dumped out of the chute, getting it spread around, and then getting it screeded is the hard part. Bow floating it. Bow floating is pretty easy in my opinion. Once you learn how to do it, it's probably one of the easiest parts of doing concrete. I'm just magging my my garage door area flat. I'm going to taper those edges right in front of the garage doors later as I finish. I'll have the finishing part of the video, you know, coming up on an, on another video, so make sure you subscribe to see that. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to finish this all by myself. Tia's actually got to go to work. She agreed to come in real early this morning to help me and then she's going to take right off and go to work, but I'm going to finish this with a power trial today. I'll taper those edges with the garage doors. I'll mag float my edges, I'll steel trowel my edges by hand and uh, I'm going to use a 30 inch power trowel today. We consider that a pretty small one. But that's how we do a garage floor guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.